Greetings and welcome to the Introduction to Astronomy. The purpose of this video is to walk you through the course setup and just show you a little bit about how the course will work for this semester. So the course is set up in a number of modules and we will see those in just a minute. But the first main page when you log into the course you will see this, you will see the header there. Now of course if you're taking one of my other classes such as stellar astronomy or physical science the header will be changed but the structure of the course is still a about the same, so the video will still work for any of my courses. You will see the header there set up, and then below there will be updates if there are any updates that you need to see, if anything has happened or what's coming up. There is a content browser which will tell, link you to the different lessons that are currently available. And there is news, so I will post any information as to what is coming up here. And you will also see the calendar. The calendar will show you what is coming up, what's currently due or coming up due, and what is coming up a little bit later that will be available or due for you. So it's a chance to really just get a little bit of information right there on the home page. And if you need to get back to that, you just click on the course home button. We'll take you right back to this page. Now for my class, really what you need is the content and the grades buttons. You can get through the course using just those two. Now grades will just link you to, to your grades, so that's where you keep track of your grades. Under content is all of the rest of the information that we need. So let's let that load here, and let's go ahead and start off with lesson one. Let's look at one of the lessons, which will come up, and you have all of your links here to be able to move back and forth, but it will tell you that lesson one, science in the universe, and it will give you what you will see when you first start is the checklist. Now, if you have not completed the syllabus checklist, the remainder of this material will remain hidden. So the syllabus checklist is required to access the materials in this first lesson, as it tells you right there in the title. So what you want to look at within each lesson, if you, have, if you don't see lecture materials, discussions, and assignments, that means you have not completed the checklist. Make sure you go back and complete that checklist. You can do that right here, or you can go back to the previous lesson to do so. Now, once you do that, you will be able to see lecture materials, which consist of textbook readings, links to the lecture slides for the chapter, and the video lectures, as well as some review materials for you. So the textbook will take you right, links will take you right into the specific textbook link you need for this chapter, and there may be one or more chapters depending on the specific lesson. The lecture slides will take you to a Google Drive link that will allow you to access the lecture slides in either PowerPoint, Apple Keynote, or in PDF format if you want to be able to access those to follow along. And you have my video lectures which are based on the same lecture slides and you'll have links to those on YouTube here. Review materials are just some games and other things that you can use to review the class material. Under discussions, you will see uh, the discussion for the APOD for the week. That is for my astronomy classes. That is the astronomy picture of the day. That is available only for that week, and you can then go ahead and access that. And it will take you, it will take you to that discussion directly. So you just click on this to get to that discussion. And once you do that, it will open up the discussion. It will give you the information and it will take you the picture directly here. So there is a link to the specific picture, which is always the Monday picture of the week that you will be looking at. So you can access that there. You will also see links for the graded discussions, what you see here. When we're under discussions, there are graded discussions. That will take you to the discussion topic itself. Your topics, I give three options for each discussion, so you can look at each of these and decide which of them you want to go ahead and respond to. And the specific requirements are given in the discussion itself, what the word requirements are, and when everything is due. And of course, I will post reminders, especially the first week, about that. 
Then there are also class announcements. I recommend you follow along with that because anything that shows up in the news feed will also show up under class announcements for you to be able to review if there are any issues or anything that needs to be corrected or just general reminders of things that are coming due. Those will be there. And if you have any questions on assignments, you can go to the assignments discussion and that will allow you to post anonymously if you like. So if you don't want to speak out as to who you are, but you want to ask me a question or ask a question of the class, you can, when you start the thread, post it as anonymous. You can also post it with your name. Either way is perfectly fine, but that allows you to get information about any assignments, and I monitor that just as quickly as I monitor things like email. Now, as we look at this, then we also see that there is a the general class questions, if there's anything that's more general. This I refer to for specific questions. This is more for general questions about the class. Then there will be an assignment section. So we'll click on assignments. Uh, there is an option for a 48-hour extension on one assignment that can only be used once during the semester. So make sure you time when you use it and which assignment you use it for very carefully. Don't just use it for a small assignment the first week because once you use it, it's done and gone and will not appear again. But all you have to do is go in and submit a file that just says I'm requesting an extension on, say, Lab 1. You will get it automatically. You'll have 48 additional hours from the time it was due. Not from the time you request the extension, but from the time that it was actually due. So you will have those extra 48 hours without penalty. There's no explanations that are needed. You just have to submit that and request the specific uh, assignment. Uh, there's a reminder about the different observing assignments. There are other videos that will show you about those. And then there is the first lab. Now, under the lab, there is a pretest, which is multiple choice questions you can use uh, just as a review looking at the material. It's ungraded, so it doesn't give you any credit, but I do also use those credits, those questions in the lab quiz. So you can take this as many times as you want, get very familiar with those questions, so you know you'll be able to get them right when it comes time for the lab quiz at the end. Then there is an assignment sheet which has the instructions and an answer sheet which is what you would be filling out. When you go to the lab quiz, you will be go to having a multiple choice questions. You will upload your answer sheet with part of the lab quiz, so make sure you've done the answer sheet before you start the lab quiz. And then you will also have to upload at least one photo, depending on what we're doing, either of a calculation or of a... Uh, screenshot if we're using one of our simulations. So we'll make sure that is all ready, that you're ready to do that before you start the lab quiz. And then the last sections, there are some extra credit assignments. So any extra credit assignments, including review quiz or other extra credit assignments, will be available here for you. So there will be at least one type of extra credit assignment given each week. And then finally, at the end of each lesson, if we go down to the very end here, you will see the checklist. Now, the checklist is one of the ways I organize the course. When you go into the Lesson 1 checklist, it's a reminder of everything that you should have done. So did you read the chapter? Did you watch the video lectures? Did you complete the lab? Did you complete the graded discussion? Did you do the extra credit opportunities? Did you post any reminders, which are things that are not specifically due, but reminders of things that are coming up? And once you check all of those off, then lesson two will be visible for you. So lesson, each lesson will be available up to a week ahead. So if you wish to work ahead, you can actually do that. Uh, working ahead up to one week. So you can't do lesson one and two the first week. You still won't be able to access lesson three until that is one week early. But some people like to get work ahead. They know they're going to be busy with something else. You have a chance to be able to do that. And what we'll see is that each lesson is exactly the same. If we go to lesson two, it says you must have completed the lesson one checklist to do this. The setup is identical. Textbook readings, lecture slides, video lectures, and review materials. There's discussions, if there are any discussions that week. There's the assignments that you would see. And then there is the continuing checklist. So the process continues uh, the same way for all of that material. 
And the practice lesson is a quick way to get an idea of that if you want to go through the practice lesson. The introduction module, which I didn't show because I was giving more of the course navigation here, includes the link to this video as well as some information on course navigation, links to the textbook, and some other important links on various different assignments. So it's very useful. Make sure you review this as some extra material to really get you started on the course. So that concludes this lecture on the course navigation. We'll be back again next time uh, to continue our work and introduction through the class. So until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.